everybody. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the CFA program information session presented by the CFA Society South Florida and the CFA Institute. My name is Eric Benson, and I am the education chair for the CFA Society South Florida. I'm also the director of fixed income with AK Capital. I earned my charter in 2013. And before we get started, I just want to point out that this presentation will run about 40 minutes um, with the remaining 20 minutes set aside for Q&A. Uh, please submit any questions you have for our presenters via the chat feature, and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. We have a great program lined up for you tonight. Um, presenting with us will be Liz Zafridis, Society Relations Manager with CFAI, Tam A. Seth, Director of Derivatives, Client Service and Relationship Management with Morgan Stanley. Uh, Tan May recently earned his CFA charter and we'll get to tell you a little bit about his journey. And now to tell you a little bit about our society, CFA Society South Florida was founded in 1971. As you see, we have over 480 members. I think we're really close to 500, might be right there. And listed on the screen are a few of our uh, member employers and local occupations. Our mission at the CFA Society South Florida is to lead the investment profession locally by promoting the highest standards of ethics, education, and professional excellence for the ultimate benefit of our stakeholders, including members, investment professionals, and investors. Our society er uh, encourages members to earn the CFA charter, and we give you several resources for that. Now, we have a few listed here on screen. I'd like to point out on the candidate resources, the live level one review course offered through FAU. I am a product of that course. Um, I thought it helped immensely with level one uh, with the outstanding professors and the material. And they really walk you through level one and how to take the exam and what, what to study for and how to study. And um, we also have mock exams and study groups as, as well. Um, I like to point out our discounted student membership. It's $25. And it gives you access to our networking, social events, and career development panels. And also we have the, as you, as you see on the screen, um, exam prep materials and scholarships. Uh, for $25, I think it's a great value to come network with local CFA charter holders and come to a lot of our events. And I hope to see, the, uh, see you there as well. Uh, we have more information available on our website uh, if you have to check it out. And we have a few upcom upcoming society events here including the 2022 Economic Outlook with Strider Elas, uh, Senior Economist with First Trust Advisors. Um, all this stuff is listed on our website. If you ever have any questions, feel free to email us. Um, earning the CFA Charter was an amazing journey for me. Um, it was a lot of hard work, but I can't overstate the, how rewarding it's been for me. And now to give you a look into his journey, Ten may uh, take it away. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Eric. And uh, I met Eric at the uh, at the award uh, uh, charter holder ceremony. Um, it was it, it seems like it was yesterday, and uh, it was great. I I, I thank um, Eric and Liz and the whole CFA Society to uh, to let me be a part of this. Let me speak about my journey, and uh, I'll start from why I started ACFA. Uh, I was at JP Morgan doing hedge fund services and I was sitting in one of the ED's uh, um, uh, room and we were, we were having a conversation about the interest rates. Uh, coming from background in finance and accounting from Stony Brook, I always felt that there was, there was a lot of knowledge gaps that I had in terms of what I would study and what what I would have a conversation with one of the MDs and EDs. And I always felt that there was, there had to be a course that would always fill these gaps. Um, the executive director who was a CFA recommended a CFA. And I um, was very fairly new to what CFA would bring and what CFA can do to your career. And not even knowing what a CFA can challenge. Uh, level one, which is nothing but undergrad. And while you're an undergrad, you have six different classes with finals, not on one day, but you have different days to study, got some gaps between all of your finals. Um, 
but I would tell you, um, CFA is the reason I was able to find a job in Morgan Stanley. Um, as Eric did show you that Morgan Stanley is one of the organizations that do value CFA. And I could tell you that after I've gotten the CFA, uh, the perspective of how would people, how people respect you and the EDs respect you with that degree has changed a lot since the charter that I've received. Um, and now going back to the journey, level one, um, I remember when I first started level one, I definitely had a lot of knowledge gaps, used a lot of uh, uh, CFA materials, also did some uh, uh, Kaplan Schweizer, but focused a lot more on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, the end of chapter questions in the blue box examples that everyone talks about in the CFA. The most, the one thing that I would tell anyone who's starting this uh, journey is to not to be disciplined and to not let that focus go away because there will be times in the journey where you would feel that you've, you're almost close to the three weeks before the test and you don't remember anything. That is going to be that is going to happen. Learning has been the same for five thousand years. It's not going to change in the next few years. Uh, everyone learns differently. I, I I learned in a way where I would need to dedicate two to three hours to myself, locked up in a room where I'm not doing anything but uh, focused on CFA, and then go out uh, and meet your friends. But but start early. That's one of the things that people do not do. They, they feel CFA is a Series 7 FINRA. It's not. Um, when I sat for seven, I stuttered for more, um, probably a month and a half, and I was, I was good. I was done with seven. But a lot of the friends that I have, and believe me, it's coming from people that I have known at JP and Morgan Stanley that have recently not been able to get through level one. And the one thing that they all had to say was, wish we had more time and wish we had started early. So please start early, make notes, do questions, and understand what you are studying. This is not just a three test. You don't, you don't just don't want to get through the three test and then get the CFA, get the credentials. Um, there's a lot of charter holders that would only focus on the questions and get through the test, but you don't want to get through it. You want to understand the, what CFA is trying to teach you. Uh, leverage the resources that each of you have. When Eric tells you about um, the FAU program, the live mock exams, the review courses, please go to those if you can, because it will be a difference between the test that you will be taking and the person next to you who has not taken those review classes. Um, level one was, uh, what I'm about to say is going to be a little, uh, a lot of people find this weird, but I found level two to be much easier than level, any of the levels and the CFA. And the reason I would say was I was pretty strong on accounting, uh, pension accounting and all those currency that you get to level two, you'll find it's pretty good on those just the background that I had. And I enjoyed level two. I, I, would, I would look forward to coming home after work and do some equity valuations. And I think what I'm, what I'm getting it to is, is that is how you want your journey to be. You want to, you want to be looking forward to the program, to the, to the materials that you want to study. Um, if fixed income doesn't excite you, if you don't get excited about uh, what the inflation is now and how the interest rates and how the Fed is going to react in the and how what the rates are going to be in the next uh, in this year, uh, it's going to be very difficult getting through the CFA. It should become the first thing in your mind when you're studying about finance, and this should just be your life for the next uh, three years. And believe me, when you come out after level three, 
the happiness that you get when you get the results on the level three that you passed within the lowest passing rate and the computer-based exam where I had no idea what, I, like how much, if I was writing correct and how much I was writing, it's a great feeling. So to all the uh, CFA uh, candidates who are starting their journey or who are in the middle of their journey, uh, I would tell you this, uh, do not lose hope. Do not lose your focus. Um, I read um, Jack Walsh, who's the, who's the CEO, former CEO of GE, and he did say a word where success is all about becoming a leader. And when you become a leader, it's all about growing others. So learn from the people that you have around you who are charter holders. They're the best to guide you in terms of what they have gone through and where they are in the journey. And um, I think the conclusion would just be that um, I was hired as a director. It takes, year, it takes some years at Morgan Stanley or any of the investment banks to, uh, to be a director in the commodity sector, dealing with some of the traders that know their games, some of the portfolio managers that know what they're doing and wouldn't be here if the three letters were not next to my name. It was very clear by Morgan Stanley when I was interviewing that um, we are hiring you on the title because the advanced uh, degree that the charter holders come with. So it does present you opportunity, but you have to have one thing, actually two things in the, uh, you know, in abundance, which is patience and uh, focus. And that, that, that will get you through the finish line. That being said, um, I, I have my email address. If not, I will definitely share with any of the candidates who want. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to email us through CFA Society South Florida or directly uh, thanks eric thank you so much that was that was excellent uh, liz you want to tell everybody a little bit about the charter and answer any questions afterwards thank you thank sure. you Tammy. yeah thank you so much that was a wonderful uh journey that you have and i definitely agree with the the patience and the focus that's something that we are reiterating to all of our candidates at the moment uh, so thank you guys for inviting me to speak about the CFA program. My name is Liz DeFreitas. I am a Society Relations Manager with CFA Institute. In my role uh, with the organization, I work closely with CFA Society South Florida, and I'm here today to talk about the program. Uh, so the CFA program prepares candidates for investment decision making and strategy, portfolio and wealth management, institutional investing, and also investment analysis. During today's presentation, I'll provide an overview of the program, the designation, and also the exam, and then we'll have plenty of time uh, for Q&A as well. Uh, so first, let me start with some background about CFA Institute. The origins of the organization began in 1947 when several North American associations of security analysts joined forces to, uh, to formalize the investment analyst and management profession and create a higher standard of ethics and education. We are a global association of investment professionals, and our mission is to lead the investment profession globally by promoting ethics, education, and professional excellence for the ultimate benefit of society. We do this through our strategy, and we're currently focusing on shaping the future of the industry and the profession, building a diverse portfolio of learning products, modernizing and growing the CFA program, and also developing exceptional customer experiences. We do have a global footprint of more than 180,000 members in 164 regions and countries. South Florida is one of our 160 member societies and one of six in the, sun, in the, Florida, uh, the Sunshine State of Florida. Uh, we also partner uh, and serve with our, serve with our societies uh, to serve our members and support our candidates through their journey. Since it was first introduced in 1963, uh, the CFA charter has become 
most widely known and a well-respected investment credential in the world. Today, publications like the Financial Times and other in, uh, investment publications, and really the industry as a whole, recognizes the CFA charter as the gold standard in investment management and practice. Uh, it's the definitive mark by which to measure the competence, integrity, and dedication of serious investment professionals. To talk a little bit more about the CFA program, our candidate body of knowledge, which is the curriculum that we build for the program, uh, has five major components. First, it's a generalist program. So the candidate body of knowledge is the core knowledge, skills, and abilities that are generally accepted and applied by investment professionals. These competencies are used in practice in generalist context and are expected to be demonstrated by a recently qualified CFA charter holder. It's also geared towards early career versus late career. And this is demonstrated by the 4,000 hours of relevant work experience that's needed in order to earn the designation. It also provides a global perspective. So this is seen through the language and also the jargon uh, is all the same and the approach is also generic. Uh, it's also practice-based. So this means that it's theoretically sound and practically relevant. It also holds the best of practice and academics. So it pairs academics with also with practitioners um, who are our curriculum writers. Uh, and generally speaking, it's generally accepted and also applied in a generalist context. So the CFA program is a three-part exam that tests the fundamentals of investment tools, valuing assets, portfolio management, and also wealth planning. Uh, there's an underlining component in all three levels that are ethics and also professional standards. So this slide provides a little bit more about the context and the information that's in each level. So level one, there are 10 topic areas focused on investment tools with 57 readings. Level two focuses on asset classes with 10 topics and also 48 readings. And finally, level three focuses on portfolio management and wealth planning uh, and includes six topics and 38 readings. Most candidates, uh, it takes about two to five years to complete this whole uh, CFA program. Um, I did hear from Eric that he completed it uh, all in one shot. So he got through, I think in 18 months. Uh, so successful candidates report dedicating more than 300 hours per study uh, per level. Uh, so, and here are an overview of the tools that are available to all of our registered candidates. The first is the curriculum ebook, which has all the content one would need to study and understand for the program. Uh, we also have the learning ecosystem. So the LES houses the entire curriculum, but also provides some resources, which include practice questions, the mock exam, gamification, highlighting uh, a community. There's lots to it. It's a really cool platform. And then finally, um, we also have the curriculum print book. Uh, so if you prefer to have a printed book, you can actually purchase that at, for an additional cost, um, but it's the exact same content that's in the ebook as well. Uh, so the path uh, to becoming a CFA charter holder is, of course, completing all three levels of the CFA program, uh, but that's just the first step. The second is to meet the regular membership requirements, which demonstrates that you have the industry experience through 4,000 hours of qualified professional experience. Uh, and that does include having two to three references who can attest to your work experience. So once a candidate passes all three levels, becomes a regular member, then they will earn the CFA designation. I do wanna pause and focus on the work experience guidelines. Uh, so for a position to qualify, at least 50% of your time should be directly involved in the investment decision-making process or producing a work product that informs or add values or add value to that process. Uh, experience can be earned through full-time, part-time, remote work, before, during, or after you complete the CFA program. So now let's transition and talk about uh, a little bit more examples of what you could do with the CFA designation. So as you can see here from the primary investment practice graph, CFA charter holders can be found in virtually every sector of the financial market because with the broad curriculum, uh, there's really no limit to the types of work that you could do uh, and that you'd be qualified for. 
Charterholders may focus on equities, fixed income securities, private equity, hedge funds, uh, just to name some of the few uh, most common positions, or they may manage portfolios containing some or all of those asset classes. When you look at where the charter can take you, uh, broken out by title, you'll notice that many of our members do not fit into the standard categories. Um, so some of our charter holders do work as traders, brokers, academics, regulators, or many other roles uh, that require some sort of advanced uh, investment skills. Uh, so uh, our speakers, our panelists really previously spoke to the top employers in South Florida. Here you can see a snapshot of some of the top global employers of CFA charter holders. Uh, and these include nearly all of the world's leading financial institutions, including the big investment banks such as Bank of America, Citigroup, JP Morgan, as well as other asset management firms, insurance companies, and also accounting firms. I previously mentioned that we have over 180,000 members around the world. This map gives you an idea about where our charter holders work within the United States. And to localize it within the state of Florida, we have over 2,000 charter holders. Uh, and here you can see the top, uh, top employers for the state of Florida. To localize it even more, we did some research last year to better understand where South Florida alumni go to work. Uh, so 62% who studied at a school in South Florida still work in the great state of Florida. 81% uh, of them work in Coral Gables or Palm Beach. And with the four most common jobs being portfolio manager, founder, co-founder, analyst, and also treasurer. Here are uh, just some examples of job postings, real job postings that we've had. So investment institutions do seek out the designation. Uh, and here are some examples from recent job postings from Goldman, Bank of America, and also BlackRock. So let's shift to the CFA exam. So what to expect that day. Uh, so let me take a step back and speak to the requirements. So here are the enrollment requirements for anyone registering for the CFA program. Uh, something that became effective last spring. If you are a junior or third year, you are able to sit for level one 11 months or fewer before your graduation month. So this means uh, with our current window offerings, you could actually sit in August before you actually start your senior year at, uh, at FAU. A key thing to note is that before actually uh, registering for level two, you will need to have uh, your degree. The exam registration fee covers the cost of the ebook, the uh, interactive study planner, which is uh, the learning ecosystem I previously spoke to, which includes those, uh, those tests, the mock exam, uh, and also has, uh, we have a new mobile app as well. And if you scan this QR code, it'll give you some more information about the pricing. But the next question we always get are, uh, are there any scholarships available? I'm happy to say that there are. Uh, we have five that are available, but the three that um, anyone on this call might be eligible for are on the screen. So the first is Access Scholarship. Uh, so this is a financial need-based scholarship that's awarded by the local society. This would reduce the registration fee to $250. The application is currently open with a deadline of February 14th. We also have the Women's Scholarship, uh, which is awarded through our Women Investment Management Initiative. So this is really for any female who's interested in earning the designation. Uh, and the deadline for this one is a little bit sooner. It's January 28th. And then lastly, we do have student scholarships, which are available to students who are active, act, active students through our uh, university affiliation program. Uh, so we do have 11 universities in the state of Florida who are within CFA Institute's university affiliation program. Unfortunately, FAU is not one, um, but others include uh, Florida Gulf Coast, FIU, F uh, FSU, and UF, just to name a few. Additional information about scholarships is also on our website. This slide provides an overview of our upcoming exam schedule. We do offer four testing windows for level one and two for level two and three. Our policy is that candidates will not be permitted to sit uh, in an adjacent window. So this means uh, that it would allow for candidates to have six to nine months um, to study for their next exam. Again, we do wanna note that juniors can sit for the August window, 
the summer before your senior year. So if you're successful with completing the program, you could actually graduate in May and then sit for level two in August, 2023. And then here's uh, some additional details about the upcoming August, 2022 exam schedule to give you an idea of the early registration, the standard registration deadlines, the exam windows, and also when to expect the exam results. In the last year, we actually increased our global test centers base from 196 to 449, as demonstrated by all the little dots on this map. But to localize it, we have 11 test centers in Florida. So we have multiple uh, in South Florida, but then throughout the state as well. So here, uh, this information speaks to the exam format and also the pass rates. So for level one, it's 180 multiple choice questions, which are equally weighted in point value. The total exam time is 4.5 hours, with the average question time being 1.5 minutes, and the 10-year average pass rate is 41%. For level two, it's item set format, uh, with either four or six multiple choice questions of equal value, and the 10-year pass rate is 46. And finally, level three is an essay uh, question format in the first session uh, with varying point values. And then the second is an item set format uh, session with equally weighted point values. And the 10 year average pass rate for that is 53%. If you're unfamiliar with what an item set is, it's a type of multiple choice questions, but with six questions that are grouped together in one vignette, meaning that these questions are related to one case statement. So there are 10 item sets in the morning and 10 in the afternoon session for level three. And then this slide uh, speaks to our exam day experience now that we've transitioned to computer-based testing. So it's delivered in a proctored exam center. Candidates are provided their own writing materials and you are allowed to bring a calculator. The exam appointment itself is 5.5 hours, but the total testing time is 4.5 hours. So we've reviewed the CFA program, career opportunities, details about the CFA program uh, and the CFA exam. So lastly, if you're really looking for a passport to the world of finance and investing that would really signal your competence and qualify you for investment decision-making job roles, then earning the CFA charter could be the most important move that you make in your career. So if you think you're ready, I encourage you to complete the readiness assessment, which can be found by scanning this QR code. So with that, I'll turn it back to Eric. All right. If any of, uh, any of our guests have any questions they would like to submit, they can use the chat function and uh, we can gladly answer them. Um, but while I have Tammy still here, I have a question. I took the exam in person with a pen and paper, or pencil and paper, and a gigantic auditorium, you got to do the computer based. Can you can you give me your thoughts on that? I, you level one you did in person, correct? So how 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 was the computer based testing, and how how can uh, candidates prepare for that? Except the fact that there was someone sitting in the front of me with taking level three and hitting keyboard. Uh, as hard as they could, but I, we did have good headphones. No, I'm, 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 I'm kidding. It was, it was great. Um, I think it does, uh, it, uh, with the less hours that you have in the testing, um, I personally liked a lot, uh, in the computer-based testing only because it allows you to express your views and then in and keep it very concise when on the paper you're there's times when a lot of a lot of us would go back and then you know improve upon what we have and then all you're doing is just writing on the paper it's it's much easier on the computer based less i would say less questions and at the same time the questions are very uh straightforward in the paper based you you are able to express your views, but on the computer, you they want you to be concise, and at the same time, they 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 they're looking transitioning into a computer based. They're looking how much you know 
as a portfolio manager on level three and how much you could put your thoughts down at that point in the time. Two things that I liked, I would tell you, is the less hours went from used to be three in the morning, three in the afternoon, I believe. So from six, seven hours during the whole day to only being two hours and 15 minutes in the morning and then two hours and 15 minutes in the afternoon plus a half hour break. It does. Uh, I could just come home and and then go to catch up on, on the sleep uh, and not be worried about uh, about other uh, people walking in. Plus, it's it's very it's very flexible. I I have that. That's my perspective on what I felt the computer based testing did to me. Thank you. We have a question from Giselle for you, Liz. And as, as far as working experience, would a job in banking count for that? It all depends on what your responsibilities are. Uh, so uh, we do have some untraditional roles that have qualified. So 50% or more of your time is in the investment decision-making process. I would say yes. Uh, we do have some great resources on the CFA Institute website that gives uh, sample job descriptions. And I think there's, um, there's also a quiz that you could enter some information. Um, but what I would encourage you to do is, is to consider applying for uh, membership and you can see which option uh, you will be geared towards. Uh, just because you apply for membership does not mean that you need to activate your membership. You can do that at any time. Um, but I think other great resources would be within your organization uh, to see if there are any other charter holders who could guide you or even touching base with the society. You know, when I, when I first found out that college juniors can take level one, I mean, a light bulb went off. As a student and especially a business student, it seems like a no brainer to you know, get that process started. And, you, know, you can have level one and two done within a few months of graduating college. Uh, I think that would look fantastic on a resume, in my, in my opinion. Um, you know, that, that seems like something that's, that's coming up. How is, how is that trend uh, going with students? Are you seeing that pick up? Oh, wait, Giselle had a follow up before you get to that. But if you don't have your hours, can you still be eligible to take lo the level one exam? That's what I'm confused about. Yes, uh, so you do not need to be in the industry to register as a candidate. Uh, so I would imagine that students are probably not in a full-time or part-time role at the, at the moment. Uh, so you do not need work experience to sit for the CFA program. All you need is to either be a junior, uh, a rising senior uh, in college, um, but other than that, you do not need work experience to sit for or complete the CFA program. But in order to earn the designation, uh, what we're essentially looking for is that you understand the content, but then you've also have relevant work experience. So hopefully to Eric's point, if you guys uh, do decide to sit, you could complete uh, your, your graduation from FAU uh, with a level one under your belt, and hopefully that will help with your job prospects. Uh, and then hopefully from there, you'll earn the work experience while you're continuing through the, the CFA program. I hope that helps, Giselle. And we have one more question. Uh, finishing my master's in finance and work full time, would I be able to sleep or have a weekend if I opted to take level one this year? I graduate in August of 2022. I don't know. I probably wouldn't because I would hate to uh, not do everything perfectly and, and have to retake, a, take any, retake any level. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, Tammy, you could probably second that as far as uh, sleeping or not. I, I think I had a lot of fun studying. So like you said, so it, it's up to you. Yeah, I think it, it all comes down to starting early. And uh, if you have to balance your, uh, your graduation studying and CFA, if you still want to do level one before prior to coming out of the graduation and then having a real time, uh, a full-time job before you take sit for level two. Um, yeah. You would need to balance. If not, you uh, you'll have some fun weekends where uh, you'll need some Starbucks next to you. Uh, I think my credit card had a lot of those. That's all right. And is there a list of jobs on the CFA website that we can look at to get the CFA designation? Um, Liz, you want to help with that one? 
Sure thing, uh, we do. So I would encourage you to visit CFA Institute's website and I just dropped a link into the chat. Uh, so here is some um, additional information. We have how to calculate the hours because there has been a shift from months to hours, um, how to write the job description. We do have some examples um, as well. So I would encourage you guys to look online um, to see that. And there is a um, readiness assessment for the application as well. So hopefully that provides you everything that you are looking for to better understand if your current role would qualify. Uh, any other questions? While we're waiting, it, back to the question on undergrads. I'm I'm interested to see how that how that's going because I would jump all over that if I could. Are are you seeing a pickup in undergrads taking level one? I don't have the stats in front of me, but it is something that we did change the policy last year. So we announced it in March of last year. Um, what was interesting and a challenge that for a global organization is uh, as we've switched from paper-based to computer-based uh, and with a global pandemic, we have had to still close some of our test centers, mainly outside of the US when we're thinking India and China. And so um, due to the influx of deferrals, we did have to close registration deadlines earlier. So that's why we have asterisks everywhere is, you know, if you're really interested, I would encourage you to, you know, get it serious and possibly register now rather than waiting to the final deadline. Um, and so um, with that, I'm not sure about the stats, but I'm not, I think there was some un unanticipated challenges that we had with launching this with the influx of uh, deferred candidates trying to sit for the program. But I think we will really learn a lot after this August window coming up. Do you have some common questions that you've received in the past uh, for, for possible candidates and what else? Uh, sure. Uh, is uh, the PowerPoint going to be shared with attendees? I believe we can we can share the PDF of the PowerPoint, correct, Liz? Yes. Got it. We'll send uh, we will most likely send that out in the follow-up email. I think one question that we tend to get is about what material should a candidate use. Uh, and so Tenme spoke to this, everyone has a different learning style. Uh, so uh, we really want our candidates to succeed. And so when you register, you get the ebook and you get the learning ecosystem. But I totally understand that if um, self-study and studying on your own is not your learning style, we do have lots of prep providers out there. So there's a great live course through FAU, um, but there's several other ones depending on what your learning style is. Uh, there are some in-depth review courses over the course of a week. There are podcasts. Um, there are, you know, uh, virtual opportunities as well. Uh, so there's lots of options out there to find one that best works for you. I always encourage looking for recommendations. So maybe a peer went through a certain course uh, or going to CFA Institute's website. We have a list of approved prep providers. Uh, so that's another question that we tend to get is, you know, do I just need to study off the curriculum or, you know, should I use only Kaplan's content? Um, but we should always encourage you to use our content and then use something to uh, supplement your learning style. I'm a big proponent of the FAU class and, you know, it is taught by charter holders. So that helps. They've been through the battles of the exams. So that helps. And I also highly encourage candidates when they sign up to sign up for as many scholarships as you can. We have several through our society. There's several, as Liz pointed out through the Institute, I think they are great options for candidates to really lower the cost of the CFA and really help, help the cause. And what's great about the scholarships that we have, um, they're available for any of the levels. Uh, so if you're a student right now and need a little bit more financial need, maybe that will help you get through level one, um, but you can look at the other scholarships to, depending on where you are with your career as well. Uh, so they can be applied to any of the levels um, and they have unique requirements between all of them, but the one requirement that is the same is that um, you will need to apply for the scholarship before actively registering for the program. Um, so we do look at the timeline so that you would be awarded the scholarship, um, or if you aren't awarded a scholarship, you'll have time to register on your own if you do, if you do have other um, support in doing that. Any other questions? from our attendees, for Liz or Tame or myself. Give them a second. 
Well, I want to thank Liz and Tanme for, for attending today and presenting. You guys did a great job. I thought it was very informative and hearing about Tanme's CFA journey was outstanding. And thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, have a wonderful evening. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.